Awesome. Again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. We have welcome to the second uh, round of Hyperledger Challenge, which is prototype phase. And we are excited to look for, look, have all your presentations, all your prototypes built uh, for this challenge. We could not be more prouder of what outcome um, has come in for this event. And on this call, we have three of our esteemed jury panelists. We have Professor Ali, he's based in Australia. He is uh, a professor at Queensland University of Technology. And he also recently started a community uh, activity for, he's been a long time community member at Hyperledger. And also he currently has started a chapter for Australia and he's leading uh, the chapter. And then we have um, Kamlesh, who is CTO at Snapper Future Tech. I believe most of you might have already seen him and, or heard about him. So he um, is also, along with uh, his job, a longtime community member at Hyperledger, he sits in TSC, as well as uh, he's co-leader of Hyperledger India chapter. And then we have Roderick. Um, most of you may have heard about uh, settlement already. So Roderick is co-founder and CTO at um, Settlement, and he is joining us from Europe. I believe it is from um, Germany, if I'm not wrong. And um, Belgium, but close enough. <laughs> right. Sorry. Um, so you you might have heard about uh, heard from many other members from Settlement who have been helping us at in different events uh, that we have in Hyperledger. So. We are, we are delighted to have three of you on the call and we are looking forward to your session, I mean, the, the final results evaluating these proposals. Now over to the team. The first team would be Anu So Long. Okay. Yeah, um, my name is Ramazun. I will present uh, uh, our, our project Anonymous Social Login. Um, it's a short anosolog without the N in the end. Yeah, and this is the pitch presentation for the Hyperledger Challenge 2022. Yeah, I'm not alone. So we are in the team. It's uh, me, Roman Zun, Michel Sali, Thomas Eppler, Manuel Foster. We are based in Switzerland. And uh, what we are currently doing is we enable transparency, control, and simplicity for social login users. So what does it mean? Uh, if you look on the social login, like login with Google button, you have on the light side, these uh, are convenient for users to register and log into web applications. But on the dark side, you have the user behaviors tracked uh, in, in the services, making the user a product that, of social identity providers. Uh, on the, another thing on the dark side is the data related needs of users are not addressed and users still have a lot of passwords to remember. What we did, uh, we did uh, an analysis of uh, jobs to be done in this uh, process, uh, the outcomes, and then make an own user research uh, on uh, and then post this on Twitter, LinkedIn, and all the platforms um, to find what are the underserved needs of the web users uh, for this process. And we found out that by our uh, user research, that the top needs we identified are transparency, control, and simplicity. So first. User want to know what personal data they share with which organization and who else that the data is shared with. Then users want to decide and control who can see and use their personal registration data and behavioral data. And users want simple, convenient logins without having to pay by personal data, the granting of usage rights and behavioral tracking. So, and if you look on these needs, we defined our new approach and our approach is, okay, first people have full transparency on the data. Uh, granted usage rights and behavioral tracking. Second, people can decide and control who can see and use their data. And the next point is in our approach, people can simply and conveniently log into web application without paying with personal data, the granting of usage rights and behavioral tracking. So in short, we want our approach is a uh, login without Google button. So we want, uh, by using NSOLOG, people can simply and conveniently log in into web application without paying with personal data, the granting of usage rights and behavioral tracking, and have full control of the personal data and the use of this. And if you look on the technical basics, uh, we want to go with self sovereign identity concept to, to solve this. And uh, therefore, we used Hyperledger Areas uh, project to implement this. So, first, we 
use the self-sovereign identity concept to bring ownership to the user social login back to the user. Then we want to provide an uh, issuer, which is provided by a trusted partner like Linux Foundation. So we build an identity issuer that outputs the data from a social login as a verified credential. And we want to make a verifier uh, that can be easily integrated into existing web application using uh, OpenID Connect standard or summer uh, to enable registration with this issued verifier credential. And this will be the open source project. And we want to uh, offer an addition as support uh, on time material basis or as a service for the integration. So there are two components. The first component is the issuer. And uh, here we just transform the OpenID Connect, uh, connect connectors from the social logins to the verifier credential uh, through DITCOM uh, using the Ares Cloud Wallet. And on the verifier side, we do the same, but other way around. So you verify the um, uh, verifier credentials through the Ares Cloud Wallet and create a token using the uh, standard protocol summit ONDC to integrate this in the applications. Um, why our solution is unique, uh, we seriously focus on the true user needs and we want to do the constant research on those needs and know the needs and we are driven by the urge to create something meaningful to the world. This strong focus on true user needs will ensure that users will trust in our solution and love the way we give them transparency, control and simplicity. So, as I said, the central uh, identity provider cannot track any user behavior users can immediately see in the nsr log wallet where they have logged in with all their accounts and where which usage rights they accepted and they can revoke rent rights to use the real user needs are in focus instead of monetization of user behavior so and let's look on the demo um here we start to see the the platform so you look in with the Log in with Google button, and uh, here's Michelle is already logged in. And what we did after creating and getting the data from Google, you give this data as a verified credential into the wallet of the user. So in in the wallet, uh, the data is stored. Uh, it's it's uh, belonging to the user. And if the user will show this credential somewhere else through this mobile wallet, Google will never get this information so it can't be tracked anymore so if we go to another platform and want to log in without google but with the google data <laughs> and this is the, the the key point so we have a login without google button for example on the linux foundation this redirects us to the open id connect login page which is now with a qr code so just to grab the data from your social login after showing the data you're login and voila you are on the page yeah, so um, our roadmap is we uh, now the next point is uh, we want to take more time for this project. We want to make more market research and also make something that we want to integrate in the real web application providers. Um, the next step will be for to next year where we have to scale up. So all the preparations for the team, for the community, another market research again for overseas needs and pitfalls. And uh, of course, refactoring of the solution for scalability. And our vision in 2024, we are the global registration and login meta service provider of choice for all relevant websites and web applications that focus on the true needs of the internet users. And this is a transparency, control, and simplicity. And this provides true user sovereignty and ownership of identity data and rights. And the question now is, why now? And if we look in the, in the uh, especially in Europe, where we are based, the regulators are also in the meaning that the personal data belongs to the person. And this means, and the behavior is also personal data. So if you look on the AIDAS proposal 2.0, the Swiss government, uh, the data protection laws, especially in Europe or California, you will see that this is the way to go uh, if, you, if you think about the uh, identity providing. Um, the next thing is after the major data protection scandals, the awareness of the personal data by the web users is, uh, has increased enormously. Then we did our own research uh, where we just clearly, um, clearly shows that transparency, control, simplicity are now the three most important and underserved needs when it comes to logins, usage rights, and behavior tracking. And do not forget the psychological motivators behind the crypto and Web3 are also clearly indicate the strong trend that ownership and control of identity and data will come back to the user. So away from central uh, solutions, now it goes more decentral. And also, if you look on another studies uh, belongs to digital identities, um, 
here's uh, one done by check D. This is also showing and supporting our hypothesis. So, and everything, every sign shows that now is the time for the Ornithologic approach. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, hi, Roman Kamlesh here. So I think this is a unique idea. Uh, so did you, uh, uh, any market research, like what is the customer looking for this kind of solution or just the only the, what is available in the uh, media about the data privacy and data security issues and on the basis of this thing, you are proposing this solution. So um, if, you, if you look on the, uh current um, current market. Um, we lost your voice Roman yeah I think we lost do you hear me hello Ah, yeah, we, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah, so the the current market um, solutions are basically every everything is central way, and uh, because the collection of the data data of people is an asset for the companies, and um, we think that if we go through Hyperledger and Linux Foundation, we have the chance that uh, to show that the true needs of the personal. Um, data providing should be by the person itself. And uh, we want to um, make this, uh, yeah, from this way. Yeah, and the last question, like, what are the different com competitors in the space who are working in the similar SSI based authentication and password list? Uh, the competitors are basically, um, there are some people who are doing self server identity, but they are uh, focused more on the B2B level and not on the, on the user level. Um, if, you, if you look what are the current solutions from the Hyperledge areas, uh, based on Hyperledge areas, you will find um, a lot of projects, there, but they never tackle the needs of the person. But basically, if you look on self server identity concept, it's uh, user centric um, and uh, all the projects are tackling the B2B market, but without the user, self server identity will not survive. So I think it, this is the difference because we are really trying to um, go to the um, to to tackle the real needs, and uh, I think this is the way to bring self server identity also to the market. Okay, thanks. Where are the um, the verifiable credentials stored in your application? Is it in the mobile app, or it's, is that on? Yeah, the so. Basically, uh, it, will, it should be in the mobile app because the personal data belongs to the person. Um, and um, if you, um, so the the hyperledger areas uh, store the verified credentials also in the in the in the wallet itself. So um, it should not be uh, the way that we um, share the data somewhere else or on a pro storage provider. Because um, in in here in an analog approach, we want to um, look only on pretty low uh, level of assurance logins. So here we want to tackle the needs of the typical web user and all the um, processes in the logins that he, he's doing every day and not like the electronic ID where you, I don't know, I don't know how often you need this in the year, but uh, here we really want to say that um, people should use uh, self server identity to look in in the everyday life and th the level of assurance is not the highest one and uh, even in disaster recovery there are some backup approaches so i think this is um, uh, the way to go to store the data really by the person and to give them more trust because he control everything there and if you compare it to um, approaches, uh, for example, I know the, the Belgian government, or at least the Flemish one, um, they are experimenting with Tim Berners-Lee's new um, new identity and data storage mechanism. How do you compare to those? So um, we 
if, if you use the self shared identity um, without this infrastructure of Berners Lee, you have uh, uh, less cost for the infrastructure because on the on the um, so the NSL issue is uh, basically it's a, a public key infrastructure. So uh, and the only thing you store on on a infrastructure is the public key. Everything else is uh, transferred through peer to peer. Um, yeah, trans transferred through peer to peer connections, and the infrastructure. Um, uh, how to say costs are really low. So, and I think for such a way, you we should go for a solution which uh, have really low infrastructure costs, and because all the costs should go to the mobile devices in the end. So this is the way to go. I think if you go this in a really scaled way. And maybe one last question, if I have still time. If you're looking towards the future, wouldn't it make sense to build already so that you can support electronic IDs and medical data and all kinds of very sensitive stuff? So um, if, 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 if I um, can just say my analysis about the EDES and so uh, all the proposals for the EID, um, they will, it looks like they will based on the Hyperledger Areas project maybe. So, and I think what we could really um, think of, or we should really, it's an interoperability with the uh, wallets for the AI EID. For example, for maybe for onboarding or for two-factor authentication. So the interoperability with the um, regulatory IDs should be implemented. All right, thanks. Thank you. Awesome. So if there are no more questions, um, thank you, Anas Alok. I think we are on time as well. Yeah, Arun, so what was the project ID for this uh, team? Project ID is seven. Um, you you can fill in for the team one session within that sheet that was shared. Okay. So you can go by team one, team two. I'll, I'll fill in project ID. Okay. Okay. And uh, I think as per the uh, evolution, I think they want to open source this to the Hyperledger Labs or not? Or you can fill out that letter. Um. Yeah. So um. Um. We will do the verifier um, as a lab. Um, the, the problem now is to find the time because now we get this email like uh, a couple of days ago and uh, we will do this uh, in parallel to the launch phase. Um, the verifier will be uh, Hyperledger on the Hyperledger lab, the issue or not, because the issue is something we should provide with a trusted provider where people really, um, so with, with a supporting by a trusted provider or a trusted partner like Linux Foundation or Hyperledger. So the community trusts in this. The verifier instead is more integratable and um, this is something we will give out and, and really have to, to look how to integrate in all the web applications. So the verifier part will be on the Hyperledger lab. The issue part is uh, maybe less interesting for the implementation is more or less uh, the interesting part is the governance about this and the trust. And here, I think with the Linux Foundation for the, uh, support, this is the, the way to go. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go with the next team now. And the next team is Ashal Reviews. So team, if you are on, please uh, present your screen. All the best. Okay, uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Hello? Yes, it's visible. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yeah, it's visible. Hello, everyone. I am Priyanka Manda, a software development engineer at Geo Platforms. I will be presenting a submission ASEL reviews, revolutionizing online reviews for this Hyperledger Challenge 2022. Our team members are Anidhi, Minakshi, Saurabh, Rishabh, Tarun, and myself. So starting with the problem statement, online reviews play a major role in today's digital world. 
nearly 9 out of 10 consumers worldwide read reviews before using any service or buying any product. Consumers have no knowledge about the reviews getting altered. Taking advantage of this situation, many parties generate fake biased reviews on their platforms. Thus, credibility of reviews gets questionable. Existing systems are centralized, no transparency is provided as reviews cannot be tracked or traced. Also, also reviewers are not getting uh, any incentives for reviewing, hence they don't feel motivated enough to provide a review. Uh, these are some of the facts which you can see for yourself. So our rescue plan here is Asal Reviews, a blockchain plus AI based solution. And our motto here is trust more, buy more. So coming to proposed solution, uh, being a blockchain based solution, uh, it is a decentralized platform that provides transparency, trust, a platform where the opinions of every customer are valued and notice. We will be using AI to filter out low quality fake reviews and make honest reviews eligible for rewards. Thus, we do have a reward system in which we will be providing incentives to customers for their honest reviews. These are some of the major benefits that a cell review provides. Talking about novelty, as we already know, ours is a blockchain-based solution, thus it is decentralized. That is, there is no a single power of authority here. Also, uh, transparency as well as data integrity is maintained. We, we are using Hyperledger Fabric uh, as it is a modular, a scalable, more performant compared to the rest of frameworks available. We are using artificial intelligence to identify fake reviews. This is our solution architecture diagram and tools and technologies. Both of these will be covered in the demo. So now my friend Nidhi will proceed with the demo part. Thank you, Prenka. So as you have already guessed by now, Asal Reviews has huge potential in various domains such as healthcare, supply chain, lifestyle, and others. As customers have, uh, cust as reviews play an integral part in everyone's life, so for the demo purpose, we would be targeting for the tourism industry. So there are basically two types of users. The first one is the guest user for which no login is required. As you can see, the guest user has the privilege of checking out the dashboard where all the reviews are there. And the guest can also get a detailed view of the reviews. So this is how the detailed view would look like. And there is also a white page that would be visible to the guest user. The second type of user that we have is the reviewer. For being a reviewer, the user needs to log in into the Asal reviews. So from here, an account can be created. We will start the demo by logging in with existing credentials. So yeah, being a reviewer, the reviewer can write a review. So let's get going with the create review page. So this is what a uh, review page looks like. User can enter details and submit a review. And uh, yes, for uh, eliminating fake reviews, uh, we have two strategies. The first is we would be having a group of moderators, which would be performing certain checks and uh, identifying fake reviews. Moderators would be nothing, but they would be like reviewers who have performed good on our platform. We would be promoting them, promoting them to the moderators moderator role. The other way through which we can identify and eliminate fake reviews is using artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence would also be used for, what I say, uh, creating the credibility scores of the reviewers. And yeah, so the details have been filled. Now we will go, go and submit the review. So a review ID would be generated in this case. Now the reviewer also has the option to check my reviews, the reviews which the user has created himself. So on this page, we can see the review that was just being created. And being a reviewer, there's also a facility for uploading a review. So let's get back to dashboard. And now if the reviewer finds a review is in alignment with, with what that person thinks, he or she can upload that review. So this is about that. And uh, 
coming to the tech stack the front end is built in angular the back end is written in node and for hyperledger for hyperledger fabric is being used as blockchain now we can verify the reviews that we created by using couch db so in this case we are using state database as couch db we can go into the that review collection and check for the product that we created some time back so entry would be present in the couch as well and we are also using mongodb as an off chain db for storing the database so yeah as we can see the entry is there in the couch db we can verify the details from here other than that we have integrated hyperledger explorer as well so it's basically for getting an overview about the blockchain network blocks and transactions so as we can see there are 85 blocks which are committed the last block was 58 seconds ago that's the one that prenka created just now and we can also explore the transactions so let's check the topmost transaction so yeah here we can see even the payload in the right side so this is the same payload that was being passed from the front end it's getting reflected in the hyperledger explorer so that's about this part and uh, if we talk about the our strategy for market adoption what we are planning to do is we are thinking of attracting the consumers first uh, by providing them incentives and once we have the enough consumer base what we can do is we can pitch our idea to the major online platforms in the market today and they can come with us and uh, integrate with our system since we would be having a consumer base which would be having reviews related to their brand as well so that's how the adoption strategy looks like and yeah we can continue with the presentation so this is the code repository it is publicly available publicly available on github so feel free to check it out and contribute to it and now let's talk about the next steps so we are also planning to implement or what i create a off chain db which would be basically used for analytics and reporting purpose we would be populating the off chain db by we would be populating the off chain db by some batch processing and then we can perform rich queries on it and in the next phase we would be also trying to implement artificial intelligence for identifying the fake reviews we would be doing data modeling there and once the product is ready we will launch it out beta testing would be done and after that after beta testing is done we would be pitching our idea to different service providers in india firstly we would be targeting tourism industry to start with and that's how the road map for launch phase looks like yeah so i think that's bring that brings us to the end of the presentation thank you so much so um thanks for the presentation from the blockchain perspective from the blockchain side of it um i believe you're using blockchain as a point for integrity to make sure that the integrity is there but the other stuff like saying um identifying fake reviews and things like that they would go ahead with ai um not the blockchain part of it right um and also when you do identify a fake review with whatever methodology that you have what is um what is your approach like how would you deal with the person that is writing that or that comment itself i didn't get the last part can you repeat that thing please when you when you identify a fake review um then how would you deal with it like what, what would you do to the comment itself to that review itself and what would you do to that person who wrote that review okay okay so for identification part what we have thought is we would be injecting all the reviews to the blockchain for the sake of transparency so that everything is visible and uh, there would be certain checker in the blockchain it's like let's call it a flag so that flag would be marked on we could know that review is fake and in that case uh, it's like transparency is there but for the person who is doing the fake review we won't be doing any thing for a certain amount of time but it's like if that person is indulging in such sort of activities for long we will try to restrict his or her access to the platform yeah 
Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, cool, thanks. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on the economics behind it? Because you're saying you're gonna give out incentives. Uh, where are they coming from? Who is paying for them? Because traditionally in these review worlds, it is the uh, the websites that show the, re uh, the reviews, the ones that have the economic incentive to do something with them, that both have the money and not necessarily the will to remove fake good reviews. So how are you funding these incentives to build up that customer base? Okay, so for that, of course, we would be providing some sort of rewards, but that thing is not yet finalized. We were thinking about uh, implementing some forms of fungible tokens for that. For that, we would require help from sponsors, as in if we could uh, get a sponsor for this project, it would be really great. Uh, so yeah, that's what we are targeting for now. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nidhin. Rinka. It's a nice presentation. And I'm thinking about the blockchain network perspective. So how we can justify like what are the different stakeholders in the in, the, in this blockchain network? Okay. Coming to start with, uh, since we already know that there are major players which are there in the market, right? We can't attract them saying that this is a plot platform come to us. So that's the reason we are targeting consumers first. For now, we would be just having one node, right? And once we expand our network, we onboard different service providers. We will have nodes for them, making the system truly de decentralized. So that's what we are targeting. I mean, to start with yeah. it, it would be a single node uh, cluster. Yeah. Okay, I mean, like when, when you... Uh offer this platform like Amazon, Flipkart or Amazon, they are using the same, same blockchain network in the, in the background, right? Yeah, yeah, we will, we will integrate with them as in we can expose our APIs to them. They can integrate with us or we can provide our platform as a service sort of thing. And then they can have a node in our uh, blockchain network. Let's say we're taking an Amazon node. So they will have a node and the other companies, they will also have their individual nodes in the network. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, if there are no more questions, maybe we could go to the next presentation. Uh, jury, any more questions? We still have about one and a half minutes left. Oh, okay. uh, is it possible to to ask also not for jury members? Mm, let's let's no. keep that on a chart. Let's okay. not make okay. it on this record. But but uh, uh, so appreciate Roman your question. That's a valid question. How are you planning to integrate the review process with? Uh, existing websites, as you said, you want to build a customer base first. Are you going with some kind of a browser plugin or how do you connect verified reviews to websites that not necessarily are part of your, uh, uh, as partners? For that, uh, we are thinking of exposing uh, APIs to them, as in we can have some API set. So as, as soon as a customer posts a review, so that it would be like an API. So the entry would be created into blockchain corresponding to that review, which the customer is posting on their website. That's what we are planning to do. It would be like a generic API, which would be exposed to different uh, platforms out there. Or if required, if, if required, we can work. Yeah, 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 okay. Might be a stupid question, but why would I let take booking.com with all the all the fake reviews and seven people book this three seconds before you stuff? What would their incentive be to spend time and money on developers to put to integrate that API? Okay. That's not a stupid question. That's a very good question, I would say. 
so in this case what's happening is that's the reason we are targeting consumer base first if we have enough consumer base on our platform saying that this is the platform which we trust and rely on the online platforms would want to join our platform in that that case right they will want to be part of asl reviews so that's the reason we are targeting consumer base first it's all about the consumer base if to, if you go to booking.com and you don't find anybody anybody posting reviews there so you know how it is right so i think we are targeting consumers for that reason and that's how uh, we would be planning to do it once we have consumer we are good to go so and it, it it's also like the consumer post reviews for different brands right so there is a section for brand so let's say if you're a consumer and you post review for amazon right so we can build some reporting sort of thing and we can pitch our idea to them saying that these many reviews have come for amazon on our website right so in that way we would have exact numbers and we can pitch them our solution to them so they would join it yeah i i think what you could do i i think a browser plugin that overlays across these websites without mm -hmm. their interaction and then you can add buttons to reviews you can add just like an overview of okay look this these ones were reviewed by us mm -hmm. i think that would make sense because then you don't need the cooperation of the bad actors to make it work yeah right like point taken we will explore that part as well in the next round thanks for the suggestion thank you team we will have to wrap up um, because over time we'll go to our next team okay um, thank you juvi thank you everyone thank you uh, the next team would be electrodo climate related risk and sustainable asset management and i hope the team is ready oh. and if you can stop presenting yeah yeah i'm ready i'm thank you now i uh... Yeah, Tim. Whenever you are ready. Screen. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, we see it. Yeah. Uh, hello, colleagues. My name is Roman Kravchenko. I'm CEO of uh, Foyer Solutions, and today we present our product, Electrodo. Um, so, in post-industrial world, we need to rethink and rebuild our financial system from. Uh, traditional profit-oriented approach to sustainability-oriented approach. So that's why we created Electrodo, a software service uh, that converts uh, climate-related risks and carbon-related assets into new financial outcomes, into new uh, sustainable value. Uh, briefly about our company, we are a software engineering provider and specializing in industrial blockchain-based solutions in uh, energy and fintech domain, uh, primarily in uh, the great solutions for green finance um, domain. We have a um, headquarter uh, in Ukraine, we are from Ukraine, and uh, we have a representative international office in Singapore. And in Singapore, we are participate uh, in uh, uh, National Singaporean Center of Innovation for Energy Collapse, um, um, partnering with uh, Singapore Institute of Technology and in Europe we are uh, uh, partnering with Energy Web Foundation who create open source uh, blockchain based platform for uh, energy companies and uh, we have also uh, uh, partnership in uh, Ukraine. Uh, this is our team who involved in building Electrodo um, and we are um, uh, we have a great uh, team of um, engineering um, guys and uh, uh, guys who uh, focusing on uh, entrepreneurship and business development. And what is the problem problem stat statement uh, that we try to uh, to solve? Uh, first of all, companies don't understand uh, what a climate related risk and uh, uh, how climate related risk impact on assets and financial outcomes, and that's why. Companies can transform uh, carbon climate related risk into opportunities and new financial growth. Uh, so, our proposition is uh, Electrodo. Uh, so, this software is a service for climate related assets and risk management uh, to increase enterprise market value based on um, uh, um, providing uh, sustainable uh, business models. Uh, so, our solution is a uh, um, a platform for ESG data and context management 
uh, also for uh, gathering data and uh, processing data and, and generated sustainability is the reporting. And this data we verified by uh, using blockchain technology uh, from Hyperledger Fabric. And uh, finally, we are building um, like a green finance engine uh, for working with carbon related uh, assets uh, and provide uh, carbon related asset management services uh, for managing um, different type of uh, assets like carbon credits, green bonds, um, etc. cetera. Uh, this is our uh, general uh, solution uh, system design and we uh, use uh, Hyperledger Fabric for building the decentralized autonomous organization inside our platform. We use open source uh, context broker Fiverr, uh, Fiverr for gathering processing uh, data uh, about, um, um, about ESG data and provide this data for uh, consumers like financial institutions. Uh, and on the prototype stage, we are building um, blockchain based and IPFS based uh, data management system. Um, uh, that, and, and we want to show uh, the principles of um, gathering, processing data, and verifying data uh, using blockchain uh, so we can trust uh, this data. Uh, ESG data and uh, can share this data for financial institutions, for example, for insurance company, for banks or institutional investors who can uh, uh, assess this data and assess climate related risks for uh, companies. And uh, by using electronic companies can um, attract green investors for funding uh, because investor can uh, assess um, uh, is the risk inside uh, this asset? Uh, uh, companies can avoid carbon taxes, for example, CBAM and European Union, and uh, get lower insurance cost, and uh, as a result, uh, increase uh, in, uh, enterprise market value. Uh, our novelty, uh, we, we name our novelty as Green Finance Engine, and Electrodo brings together industrial enterprises and institutional investors. Uh, different financial uh, institutions and uh, convert uh, carbon related assets um, by gathering and collection and processing ESG data uh, into new liquidity uh, for green finance market. Uh, so our goal to, keep for, to tokenize uh, ESG data and tokenize uh, carbon related uh, assets. Uh, with our project, we won Eureka uh, Grand Call uh, and now we are partnering with um, uh, our Singaporean uh, partners. In, uh, and in Singapore, we are building our pilot platform for sustainable living in public housing in Singapore. And we provide Electrodo as uh, blockchain enabled uh, uh, decentralized layer uh, for clean energy asset management and payment tokenization. Uh, so our platform motivate for uh, consuming clean energy, and we provide uh, end, end uh, clean energy traceability and asset management for this one. Uh, our short roadmap, uh, now we are focusing on creating um, extended uh, ESG data and context management system. And uh, uh, our next stay, step uh, to develop uh, decentralized autonomous organization for voluntary ecological market. And we are, uh, um, our solution based on one of the standard uh, for, tokenization, uh, of token, for tokenization for voluntary ecological market. Uh, we, look, we, um, we want to um, extend the integration with Fivara Context Broker and improved uh, reporting uh, based on the CFD uh, recommendations. Uh, and in this year, we want to participate in uh, IFA Trust Open Call uh, and provide uh, our solutions to contribute in Fivara uh, open source um, development. Also, we are, uh, participate thanks to this uh, Hyperledger challenge. We start to participate with 
uh, climate action and uh, accounting uh, interest, uh, special interest uh, group. Uh, and uh, together with uh, Sherwood Moore and uh, Sai Chen, uh, now we are involved in working in this uh, group. And uh, finally, on the end of this year, uh, we seek to pilot a project uh, in Singapore uh, for our solution for SG data uh, management. And now you can provide a short demo for our solution. Yeah. Please stop sharing your screen. Uh -huh. uh, perhaps if we have uh, more time, it's a little bit okay. Yep. So uh, our solution is already working, and we are uh, when we are started tackling with big companies, it's very challenging for them to create uh, this automated system based on Pivari. So the first version of Electroda, it's Electroda doc, and it's work uh, through manually. So uh, you need just to imagine that the company wants to show their records, uh, show the information about uh, governance strategy, risk manager, and metrics and targets, and they're just giving this data to, um, to the people. So uh, in the company, there is a few roles. It could be like a manager who collecting this data and just upload it. It's like, and in input folder and uh, the, the second manager who has uh, who working with uh, uh, this data who calculating uh, all the influence uh, in the our world with uh, carbon uh, uh, information he calculated this data and applies the second document in here uh, with calculated information and uh, that's uh, all help them to create a sustainable and uh, open to everyone uh, this um, information and the documents. So uh, our solution just could uh, create uh, different folders uh, right now, give access uh, to different uh, folders and to, to different persons and people. Just like it's test user, he, if he have only uh, input data folder where he could just uh, upload some information uh, just like this i'm going to show you uh, i will open this doc just a second it's it's like uh, i'm uploading here and the second user just see this input data he could just download it and based on this data he could calculate uh, all the emissions and uh, one of the interesting uh, features we have uh, ability to upload energy attribute certificates right here so uh, the user just um, uh, could upload this data if, uh, if the company is from the energy sector and uh, create a certificate uh, to verify it so with uh, another role like verifier of the system who could just check uh, all the information about energy net generation and create this uh, IREC, uh, this like a renewable energy certificate where they just could uh, store it or just sell it or just transfer it to another user. Uh, well, something like this. Did we have more time to, to show uh, more functionalities? No, but because I see in the chat, we need to probably go forward with that. Please repeat the question. I'm asking, are you Sorry. willing to make this uh, product open source in Hyperledger Labs or not? No, yeah, yeah. Now, no, now okay. we are applying on uh, uh, Hyperledger Labs and share, okay. share our South Scotland community. Mm. So uh, now the, um, uh, this demo just demonstrates the principles of working with data from data gathering to converting this data into uh, sustainability uh, reports. And uh, we can trust this data because this data verified by uh, DLT and uh, blockchain. Uh, so each each participation uh, platform uh, can trust uh, this data. 
because this is one of the cornerstone of uh, of lunch in um, uh, green finance market. Uh, nobody have uh, verified data. Uh, uh, so we, we don't know uh, about real liquidity of uh, green finance assets in this case. And um, we, we seek to solve this uh, problem of uh, for providing uh, reliable and just trustful data for green finance market. Yeah, and I already created a pull request uh, with our Electrode doc uh, software, but uh, we just need uh, a little more time to pass all the checks uh, from the Hyperledger Labs community. The jury, one more minute left. Please ask, wrap your question soon. I, from the demo, I didn't quite get how uploading and sharing documents tied into the presentation we had just before. The how can you make this a financial tool? Mm. Yeah, you can uh, pr present one of the example of uh, assets with um, IREX. Uh, this is one of the type of renewable energy credits, uh, renewable energy certificates. This is one of the example of uh, uh, green finance assets. Uh, so this uh, um, tradable, tradable assets and uh, we provide uh, uh, our platform for storing uh, these uh, IREX certificates. So we can uh, we can store data about uh, renewable energy generation. Uh, we can um, we can create a certificate. We can uh, uh, we can send a certificate for verification uh, from uh, authorized verification body, and we can share uh, and transfer with uh, this uh, certificate uh, to another entity. So we can sell and. Uh, uh, so we can sell and buy this uh, certificate. It's just one of the examples because uh, we can uh, use similar similar approach for uh, managing uh, to managing uh, carbon credits, uh, for example, uh, or one of the type of carbon credits, carbon verified units. This also. We can use similar approach for, uh, for for this case. And finally, we, we have no, no enough time. Um, uh, these solutions um, provide the um, possibility to uh, to gather data and convert the data into sustainability report. In this report, verified by uh, blockchain. Um, okay storing based on IPFS uh, protocol. All right, thank you. Thank you, team. Um, and hope you are- Thank you. Thank you. For... Thank you. Um, up next, we have the team leap. So team leap, if you are on, please uh, start with your presentations. Thank you. Um... Can we go full screen, Nikhil? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, we are Team Leap, um, and uh, you can move to the next slide. Uh, so we're just going to uh, do a quick introduction of our team. Uh, this is our team. We are all based out of India, and uh, the, the uh, area that we are working on is basically a loyalty exchange program. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So uh, one of the problems that we've uh, seen, uh, especially in the travel domain, is that uh, as a traveler, uh, you know, there are many, there are too many uh, loyalty programs with uh, travel agencies and airlines, and many of them are not interoperable. Uh, the other problem is that uh, because of so many different programs today, if I'm flying 
uh, from India to uh, UK, and I have a layover uh, with two separate uh, airlines. Uh, the rules of uh, the loyalty uh, points being earned or that I can redeem with each of the airlines are very different and they're not very interoperable. Uh, so uh, and another problem with the uh, with the partners is, uh, for example, with the airlines themselves, is that the rate of redemption from uh, these loyalty programs uh, by these uh, travelers is very low. And it's a very tedious uh, onboarding process. Uh, uh, for being such a simple uh, loyalty program to earn points by flying. Uh, it is actually a very tedious and expensive program for airlines to implement. So uh, as a result uh, for the solution, we want to build uh, a common platform which will become an ecosystem offering where uh, we are basically trying to level the playing field for all airlines to come onto one single platform and uh, with that one platform, we have uh, a central cryptocurrency through which uh, travelers can earn points and uh, uh, use their points to redeem with uh, any airline or travel agency. Uh, the long-term view that we have is that we also want to onboard uh, other uh, vendors like uh, the different airports, the food courts within those airports, uh, and then you know, expand the platform to have uh, all sorts of service providers uh, onto there. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So the platform actually has two sides to it. One is for the consumer, uh, which is like a traveler for people like you and me who can use uh, the uh, application through, uh, through a mobile application. And uh, the application will be connected to this platform and uh, because we will have points in our uh, wallet, which can be earned through flying with any uh, airline or any travel agency, uh, it can be redeemed also with any other airline or travel agency. And from the partner's perspective, uh, this helps because it becomes very easy for airlines, hotels, uh, travel agencies to be onboarded to such a platform and uh, uh, they also get the benefit of uh, getting customers from other, uh, you know, other uh, service providers, other airlines, other hotels. So uh, blockchain actually provides this sort of uh, safe, decentralized, uh, immutable solution, uh, which airlines and, and travel agencies have been looking for uh, for quite some time. Uh, I hand it over to Nikhil now. He can maybe demo you uh, the product. So you can see the solution architecture that we have been proposing over here. So talking about more on it, like this is the consumer and then it will be basically be, and these are the customer profiles, point database, business rule engine, reward leaderboard, which will be showcasing the, who is actually leading the leaderboard, like who is the most frequent traveler and who is having the maximum point. So we will be showcasing it on reward leaderboard, then e-commerce site so that we can get some kind of advertisements or some kind of promotions on a platform, which will help us to earn more money through it. And we will be storing all the points in a database, which we have named it as a point database and all the checks and all which goes uh, is been shown by these all lines over here. So talking more about our solution model. So this is the leap point generator that we have been, which will be based on the amount spent on booking. Like let's say someone is booking for say $10,000, let's say $1,000 and someone is booking for $2,000. So the one who is booking for $2,000 will get an advantage over the one booking for the $1,000. And then there will be a validator who will be checking on the amount that is being spent on the booking. And then finally, we'll be updating the wallet balance based on this, on the booking amount. And this balance could be basically be used at two places. First is flight booking, where we can be used for the future flight booking. Like let's suppose you booked it today and you took a next flight, let's say 15 days later. So you can use that point there to get some kind of discount, or you can even use it for the hotel booking. Like let's say you booked a flight right now and you were planning to book a hotel simultaneously. So that points can be used in that hotel booking or in any future hotel booking. So what are the basic benefits of our solution? So the most important benefit is that it is the minimum viable product which would be providing the traveler the ability for creation of a traveler digital wallet to hold the points. Like 
today we don't have such kind of scheme in travel domain like we don't find something of a sort of travel like let's say frequent travel traveler don't get any advantage over non frequent traveler so having a digital wallet that will store the travel points will give an advantage to the frequent flyers and also it will promote travel and it and it will earn airline nft view that in the wallet like you can also buy the airline nft and you can also view that in the wallet that we are creating another from the partner side what we are providing is their the ability for airline to register as a partner into the platform and create nft for the loyalty reward like let's say we can have different airline partners with our leap project which can be working like let's say we have indigo flights and we have spicejet so indigo can be one of a partner and spicejet can be another partner so there can be interchange of the travelers like let's say an indigo uh, someone booked the flight on indigo and the next time they booked the flight on spicejet so they don't get any reward recently uh, like right now but using our product they can get some kind of uh, benefits in their booking and they can get uh, some kind of discount so what is the basic uniqueness and novelty over here so the most uniqueness is that the these are the reasons for the exist that the existing solutions are inadequate like currently there is no travel wallet as such but we are proposing a travel wallet and every transaction is based on blockchain which will be providing the extra edge of security and everything else considered that the blockchain provides another thing another thing is that there is no open source trustworthy real time reconciliation process and also there is no integrated platform that travelers can use to consolidate the travel loyalty points like the same point like currently there is no integrated platform like if you are booking from one airline and if you go to another airline or even if you book in the same airline so you don't get any kind of advantage so using these kind of travel loyalty points the loyal travelers can get advantage over the no, uh, over the non frequent travelers so now i will be showing you the demo of our project so good morning everyone so i am kanthi jhoda and today i am giving you a demo of our project the loyalty exchange acceleration platform in this uh, we are providing free points to anyone who is booking airline tickets or flight flights for hotels and using the drop the link card actually using the link card now we are choosing the rule of zero you can also use the card now when you have to the account balance Cast two has coin balance zero. For cast one, we have uh, set the down the coin balance as hundred so that we can make the transaction. And for airlines, we set the coin balance as zero. Balance zero is zero cast. Now going back to the after we allow we make the transaction from cast one to airline one, we do a transaction of hundred. Select the regular password for by request, meaning that by doing the thing that the customer has, so the customer currently has 100 free points only, so all of them will get free points. Now, we have booked it. Now, we expect the airline balance to have been deducted, or to have been increased to 100 since these are nothing but good. Customer balance instead of going to zero after hundred, it will be uh, going back to five because the, the customer thinks the cashback of five will be hundred. Now we set the account balance. So customer one account balance gets zero. Now customer has five points. As expected. So, this is our project. You can definitely add more such So, you recently saw that what we have been proposing, like a loyalty program wallet. So you saw that when the customer was booking the airline, so he was redeeming his leap points. And when the transaction was successful, the points were basically going to the airline again. 
and the entire thing was based on hyperledger iroha and we have used hyperledger iroha for implementing this entire project so so talking about that what are the next plans and what we have thought ahead so the growth roadmap which we have targeted for the next month july 2022 that we will be defining a prospective customer list and demo explore the partnership opportunities for funding the growth stage and the target for september 2022 is that giving the leap point not only to travel booking but also on other purchase to promote travel like you can be you purchasing some kind of food items at the airport or some or you can be using some kind of facilities at the hotel which you have booked so over there we can also use the leap point also we will be making an expiry date in the wallet balance like if you are not using let's say like if you are not using the leap points for 3 months then your wallet will balance will be restored to zero points and you will be persuaded to travel within the 3 months and we will be giving the more points to people who will be using our wallet frequently so as a promotion to incentivize travel so with this we come to an end and we are open for any kind of questions thank you have you done any market research with uh, with um airplane uh, airplane uh, with <laughs> with airplane agencies that's the wrong words uh airlines uh to see if they're interested in such a global scheme uh yes rodrick so we have done a little bit of research uh, with some of the airlines uh, some of the major airlines uh, so today how it works is uh, uh, many airlines form alliances Uh, when it comes to loyalty programs there is one world alliance there is a star alliance uh, but then again uh, the redemption uh, levels of these alliances are still low uh, considering uh, these airlines are all from different regions so it's not very uh, you know uh, homogeneous in terms of the market uh, that they are targeting uh, which is why we want to level the playing field and have all the uh, alliances all the airlines on just one platform uh which can benefit almost uh, all partners as well as travelers i think that sort of was my question as well um in the sense that you are considering the consumer side of it which is good for the consumer right but from the service provider side of it like the airline and other uh, service providers um it might be a, tr a bit tricky because um uh sometimes they don't like partner with others because they want to have like um to encourage people to come to their uh, airline or say whatever reason and also from technical side of it um i didn't catch quite what is stored in the blockchain what when you are doing a transaction say i'm booking a hotel in somewhere what part of this information is stored in the blockchain because there is a privacy concern here also um of storing all this information in a public network or or even permission network so um i know that we are out of time but it's just maybe if you can just quickly uh, or in a short and uh, just answer these two questions okay uh nikhil can you maybe take the the technical question yeah so like whenever we are booking any flight or travel or a travel plan or hotel booking so we can collect that data we will not be co collecting the personal data but just the amount spent on that data will be collected and that will be stored you in the leap and we will be providing the leap point based on it we will not be storing any kind of personal data so there will be no kind of uh, issue of privacy or any kind of the uh, uh, cyber security lapses which will be there and talking about the point that you have raised like where the airlines will be ready to accept it or not so sooner or later they will have to accept our scheme like they it's not like we are stealing the consumer from it we are actually promoting travel in a way like if someone was traveling have planned to travel from other airlines and then he will plan do so but he will get advantage of using the previous flights so using that we will be creating somewhat uh, of a global space in this airline domain we are not basically stealing the consumer from any airline and giving it because the leap points are based on the amount that is being spent it is not being we are not giving this facilities like the one flight one airline will be giving more leap points and the other will be giving less leap points so i think that i have answered both of your question how do you reconcile between airlines or or alliances let's say i fly lufthansa constantly and i redeem my flight i i redeem my leap points at american airlines how, how i 
how do you reconcile between those? Do you record um, where the uh, points shoot from? As I said that whenever you are making a booking, you are getting some kind of points in your own wallet. So we are keeping a track of the amount that is being spent on your travel. And so the, the when we are redeeming it, we are redeeming it using the leap points. We are not redeeming it using any other kind of currency. And we are using cryptocurrency for redeeming and getting the discount. So we will be talking with airlines to accept our plans. And so, so there will be kind of a global harmony amongst airlines and those airlines which accepts our point, we will be going forward with that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next, thank we you. have the final team for the day, Project Juno Monitor. So if you are thank ready. You everyone. So, hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everybody. Uh, this is Daniel and Adam. Uh, we are Project Juno Moneta. And then Adam should take actually the lead from here. And then I change back to the technical presentation. All right. Hi. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you can uh, hear me. Uh, welcome to Hyperedge Challenge 2022. This is Project Juno Moneta. Let me briefly introduce you. Uh, what our project is about. Uh, let's jump to the next slide. So uh, our project is an open source wholesale cross-border CBDC platform. What does that mean? It's an international interbank central bank digital currency platform, which has the capability to revolutionize international wire transfers and therefore serve hundreds of millions of people around the globe. Um, uh, let me introduce you to our team. Uh, this is Balash Heider, Daniel Sego, Matej Brzezowski, and me, Adam Revkesh. So um, why is Project Juno Moneta necessary? What is the reason for it? Uh, on the next slide, and you can see the problems of the current cross-border payment system. So people and uh, both individuals and companies spend hundreds of billions of dollars each year for transactional fees, um, which can add, add up to 5% in case of an individual person's transaction. And they happen in a very limited, uh, untransparent way, with very limited operating hours, along with the uh, high interbank fees, and they are running on legacy infrastructure. And uh, what is our solution to that? Uh, Project Juno Monitor um, is um, a wholesale cross-border CBDC platform, which can enable more efficient interbank settlements. and. Uh, and uh, or we use typical central bank uh, digital currency use cases, which uh, Daniel will um, elaborate on later. Uh, just to mention a few to CBDC token insurance and burning balance query and cross border payment. All right, uh, let's jump to the next slide. So uh, Project Juno Monate solution can execute real real time cross border payments uh, with a 50 to 80% reduction in transaction cost in a 24 seven operating manner um, directly. So without any intermediaries from one bank to the other. And uh, uh, it can help to eliminate data fragmentation problem problems in contrast to the current cross border payment system. Next slide. Um, Project Juno Moneta is an open source project, so let me tell you why is it, uh, why it is better than the current uh, payment market infrastructure provided solutions, because it is adjustable for every monetary authority's uh, jurisdictional needs. And uh, this project is backed uh, uh, by the both the Ethereum platform and uh, uh, community, and both the Hyperledger community through Hyperledger Batch Desert that we utilize. And at the end, it will be a supervised payment system built on distributed ledger technology, which is one of the fastest developed transactional technologies on the planet. All right. And um, well, let me pass the word to Daniel to introduce you the uh, technical parts and have a short demonstration of our prototype. So awesome. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, so what we have from a technical side is a, is a simple demonstration uh, that was prepared for this challenge. Uh, what we have practically is, is a, is a four, four institute setup. Uh, we got like two central banks uh, in our setup and two commercial banks. The two central banks are the Hungarian central bank uh, called Magyar Nemzeti Bank 
and the Chinese one, that's the People Bank of China, and the two commercial banks are OTP, that's a Hungarian bank, and Alibaba, which is actually not a commercial bank, but as far as I know, uh, having some commercial bank activities as well. We got basically a setup, it's for Bezu, Hyperledger Bezu node, uh, running at ET in, in Institute, and we got basically many use cases. Uh, for the first run, uh, we're gonna show a very simple uh, cross-border CBDC setup. So from a user interface perspective, uh, what we have basically is, uh, is a complete setup uh, for the organizations. So as you see, basically we got like administration user interfaces uh, for like central banks, that's like for, for the Hungarian central bank and that's for the People Bank of China, having, having a lot of stuff uh, that you can set. Basically most of them are, are for governance stuff. So you can basically allow or disallow whitelist or backlist each, each and every account and each and every activity. Uh, what you got, you got some, some user interface for, for the commercial bank side. Here again, uh, we got like a lot of setups, uh, mostly for, for whitelisting or, or blacklisting every kind of possible activities, uh, which, is, yeah, which is must in, the, in this sector, uh, I would say. Uh, and basically at the end, uh, we got something uh, which, is, which is a CBDC balance. So this is like a CBDC balance, the Hungarian uh, bank, commercial bank OTP having like 7,000 uh, CBDC uh, and then basically commercial bank Alibaba having like 3,000 CBDC. So if you need like more CBDC, uh, what you can do basically, let me just uh, change to another uh, other account. Uh, this is like basically the Hungarian uh, commercial bank side. So basically what you have to do for, for, for the first round, you have to require CBDC from your, from your central bank. Uh, it is carried out with the connection basically of of RTGS uh, payment system. Um, and as soon as you require some CBDC, then basically the, the central bank can mint you uh, some CBDC. So that's the use case. I won't show every, uh, every, every steps here uh, because of our time limit. But basically, I mean, if you require some CBDC and having some CBDC on your account, then basically what you can do is transfer the CBDC. So I will show just one transfer. We got like 7,000 CBDC on the Hungarian commercial bank side and 3,000 on the, on the Alibaba side. So let me just transfer basically uh, some of it. Um, it looks that way we use Bezum and basically uh, this demonstration is set up with MetaMask, uh, which is certainly a no-go in, in an institutional environment. So what we will do basically, we will set up institutional wallet uh, in the next phase. Uh, but at the moment, for the for the sake of demonstration, it's it's running basically uh, just with just with MetaMask. So theoretically, the transaction is confirmed. So what we basically should see that we get like 1,000 CBDC less on our commercial Hungarian commercial bank side, and we got like uh, 1,000 CBDC more on the Chinese commercial bank side. So that was the demo. It's again, it's it's way more complicated. Uh, so we could like demo one hour as well. Uh, having all the functionalities. Um, just from a technical perspective, again, it's a, it's a distributed ledger-based solution. Uh, it's built up with Hyperledger Bezu. It's a modular design, uh, fully open source, but not just my use case, but several other use cases as well, uh, including not just CBDC, but like digitized commercial bank money, payment versus payment, payment versus variant and stuff like that. So on the roadmap, uh, we set up our first first demonstration, and during this challenge, uh, we will extend this with further prototype uh, uh, things. Uh, so further prototype use cases uh, like with with atomic cross chain swaps, pay, payment versus delivery, and some some foreign exchange functionalities as well. And then basically, we plan to have an evaluation phase at the end of the year. Uh, we got two tough things from a technical perspective. One is basically privacy, and the second one is is speed, is efficiency, and privacy gonna be the biggest problem, uh, but we have some, some ideas how we can reconstruct our code that even in, the, in terms of privacy requirements, uh, it will be manageable and acceptable as well. And for the next year, we plan some, some integration phase. It means mostly like integrating with the ISO 20022 standards. So that was actually 
our presentation and our demo. And yeah, we are happy to take any questions, uh, any comments, any ideas. And as basically this is a fully open source project, we are happy to take any contribution as well. So given the finance um, and sort of cryptocurrencies were the first applications of blockchain where blockchain been introduced by us. Uh, and this area has been there are like lots of works done in this area. So how would you compare your solution with the already existing solutions for the same problem? Um, and what do you think would make yours um, different from those solutions? It's quite easy if you compare uh, the uh, cryptocurrency solutions to a central bank digital currency solution. The, the, um, uh, it's, it's written in the definition. The central bank digital currency is a currency which is governed by a central bank. Uh, cryptocurrencies are not governed by a uh, central bank. So um, they are very good um, unsupervised solutions for international biotransfers, but not. But there aren't um, uh, seven billion uh, people who um, trust um, uh, in a, who have enough trust in uh, uh, um, uh, cryptocurrency transactions uh, on an international scale. They use. Uh, commercial bank money and they use central bank money in form of cash and in form of account money. So what we uh, wanted to do is to um, uh, to leapfrog from uh, cash usage, uh, from uh, uh, international uh, commercial bank money to central bank digital currencies. Um, and uh, it's, um, uh, it's a safer manner to, to conduct uh, um, international biotransfers. How would you handle sanctions and, and, and uh, anti-money laundering rules uh, in your system? Money laundering is uh, conducted by the commercial banks who have nodes in these systems. So uh, like uh, when, you, when you initiate an international uh, biotransfer now in the current system, your commercial bank will uh, check uh, if uh, all the um, necessary EMR or uh, KYC uh, uh, proceedings have been made. Um, so it will be the same commercial bank anti money laundering and the commercial bank uh, know your customer processes will happen. And uh, on the other side, the sanctions. Um, uh, you, you cannot really avoid sanctions in this system because uh, sanctions. Uh, Payment uh, system sanctions are um, 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 are are um, um, written in decrees, shared and written by or published by uh, the central banks or the monetary authorities. These systems are governed by monetary authorities, so they will be part of the uh, sanctions themselves. So it's a monetary policy tool as well, and a geopolitical tool. Yeah, but what I mean is, uh, let's take a current example. Uh, the the central bank of Russia is part of, of the system. Suddenly, everyone decides that they are no longer allowed to participate, but they do have these these tokens that you've created. Is have you built in a system that that there is some kind of a consensus smart contract thingy that determines that they can no longer spend their tokens? Did you build that in into the token itself? Or is that something that you, you're planning for the future? Yeah, uh, so let me answer this question. Uh, so so one of the idea actually is that, yeah, so the, the token is 100% is controlled by the, by the central bank authorities, basically. So you can, you can whitelist and backlist each and every account, each and every activity in the token by the central bank's authorities. So practically, it means um, you know if if one one central bank decides uh, that that kind of an activity is not possible, then they can deny deny every and each and every activities practically. Uh, it's it's totally in the central bank's control uh, what they do with the token, uh, who can transact with the token, and and where can this token be transferred. So it's, I mean, the ledger is decentralized, but the logic is, is far from being decentralized. 
So uh, governance is basically a big issue here. Uh, governance can be pretty complicated and governance exactly describes such, such situations that who can control which activity of the network. And then, so we got, we got pretty strong uh, governance policies. Again, each and every, every activity uh, can be controlled practically by, 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 by central banks and by monetary authorities. Uh, and Daniel, so uh, what is the current status of the project? Uh, is already piloted with some central banks or is it just the uh, white paper? Uh, so we don't have uh, actual central bank contribution at the moment. Uh, it's it's open source and we are participating in this in this challenge. Yeah, so we will uh, we will look for partnerships. Uh, we will look for partnerships in the next phase, as uh, you can see in our roadmap. Uh, the the uh, the next phase will be um, um, uh, in the next phase. It will be very important to find both commercial banks and uh, central bank uh, partners for our project. Uh, just, just as an addition, uh, so actually we get one more use case, which is called digitized commercial bank money, uh, which is a direct uh, contribution between banks, basically. Um, so we might not need for that use case, actually central banks as well. Uh, so one way of, of doing business is like, uh, so like evaluating use cases, such use case in then taking a look uh, with which use case can we do, can we do, I mean, you know, real business first. All right, do you have any other questions? The last question, okay. uh, it's open source and planning to uh, contribute to the Hyperlia Labs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it's open source at the moment in my account, uh, but we are planning to to set up a hyperledger lab uh, with that, and it will be fully, I mean, it's already fully available, but it will be fully available as a hyperledger lab uh, for the whole community. Awesome. Um, thanks, team. And that concludes our presentations for the day. And I know, um, thank you again to all the teams for participating, and thank you also to all the jury members for evaluating the uh, proposals. We may take one or two more days to accumulate results from all the jury members and um, select the top teams who will be moving to the next round. And for the next round, which is launch phase, so we will also inform additional instructions in, uh, in an email. So that concludes um, the prototype challenge evaluations. Thank you again. Thank you all.